first of all, let me just make this point. That is not a toilet. There's a few people saying yesterday, what are you got a toilet for? Look, come on. This is my shed. This is the man cave. Wouldn't have a toilet down here. I certainly wouldn't be using it on a video. That's for sure. Anyway, it's not a toilet. It's a stall. Not that kind of stall either. Uh, two things really sort of driving the video today. Uh, firstly, would have been a lot of the stuff that you guys would have seen yesterday, all the media stuff from the club uh, with Luis Guilherme, video in particular. It's really interesting watching it and finding out some details, really reading into what he's been told, what he's been sold um, with regards to the project and listening to him speak about Lopetegui and Tim Stuyton. I think that's uh, really interesting as well. But if you're not read it, I'd certainly urge you to go and read an article in The Athletic, which would have been published last night. It's an incredible piece of journalism, and I think a must-read for any West Ham fan. They're clearly very well briefed and very, very well researched. The Athletic have gone... If you just search like Lewis Guilherme Athletic, you'll, you'll find it. Um, they've clearly gone and researched. They've spoken to his former coaches, their Palmeira, sporting director, Brazil under 19 coaches, all that type of stuff. And they've, they've really researched an incredible amount uh, about this young kid who, who I think I've tried to play it down. Let's be fair. I've tried not to get too excited. And over the last few days, I've really, really tried to play this thing down. And I think it's really hard not to get excited when you hear some of the things that are said about him. I mean, there's somebody here, what's his name? It's, um, I think he's a former coach, it might, uh, San Piao, I think his name is, who was the um, the Palmeiras sporting director, basically. He turned around and he said, um, I think I've got a future Ballon d'Or winner on our hand. He said, uh, he said, Luis Guilherme is a different kind of player. Um, there's, there's some really, really serious accolades being thrown at the kid, actually, at the moment. And, wouldn't you think, actually, it doesn't matter about the pressure. It really doesn't matter what we say about him. What is evident from listening to a load of this stuff is he's been dealing with this pressure for some years now. And he's been the next big thing. He joined Palmeiras at 11, I believe, but probably since the age of 14, 15, judging by what I've been reading. And, and as I say, in this excellent article, he's been the next big thing in, in all, the, all the Brazil underage groups and, and whatnot. So... Listening to him speak, I don't speak Portuguese, but you can see in his demeanour, even when you're just watching a video, the way he's interacting with the guy, he conducts himself very well. He's very confident, confident in his own ability. Um, not face, not easy when you you know move to a foreign country, have a camera thrust in your face and whatnot. Not easy, not easy. But I wouldn't be able to do it at 18, that's for sure. So very, very impressive. And there was just a lot of things that were quite interesting uh, in the interview as well. Um, i see what was interesting. I'm not surprised he's brought his family over. I expected that. But he said he's bringing all his family over with him and his girlfriend. And uh, that's interesting. He's 18. He's 18. So it's a big move for everyone. Big move for his girlfriend. Big move for his girlfriend's family, you know, who are obviously, you know, going to lose their, basically, going to lose their daughter who's going to come over to England. So um, he said he'd been speaking to Emerson. Obviously, Emerson, I know he plays for Brazil, but he's, uh, sorry, plays for Italy. He's, he's Brazilian. Uh, so obviously he speaks Brazilian Portuguese and so that's really helped him. Um, they spoke a little bit about Lucas Pacatar, not too much, but it was really interesting just to hear him talk about the project, the project at West Ham, the project that had been sold to him by Tim Stuyton. Throughout, it wasn't just a video, there was a lot of media stuff done throughout the day. I think it was probably recorded yesterday, the vast majority of well, it. Must, it must have been. They were set out in the sunshine. Um, so I, I think there was a lot of times when he mentioned uh, Tim Stuyton, the way that the project was sold to him. Tim Stuyton went out there to meet his family. I thought that was really, really interesting. Not only went out, they went to meet his family, but I think one of the most interesting parts is that the way this ties in with the Athletic article, which says West Ham beat off Real Madrid, Chelsea, Liverpool and Barcelona. I think there was there was a smaller club. Yeah, Tottenham were in there as well. And, and I think the way we've beaten off a lot of these teams is, is quite incredible. Now, I think... Had it been said by a lot of, lot of other people, I, I wouldn't have necessarily believed it. But you know what? The 
the Athletic are serious journalists. They really are. They've got no reason to blow smoke up West Ham's arse on this. And, you know, when you hear so many people, as I say, like his coaches, what was the, guy, the guy's name? Um, uh, Tiago Ferri, uh, who's a journalist uh, who covers Palmeiras. Um, he said, I'm not surprised Guilherme has joined a Premier League club. There's always the expectation he would go to Europe, um, just like Endrick, who's, who's going to Madrid. Um he basically goes on to say he's a wonderful player. He's still improving physically. He's fast um, and great in one-on-one situations. Um, as I said, it was um, it was one of his former coaches or the academy director at um, at Palmeiras who said he's a future Ballon d'Or winner. What did he say? So what's the guy's name? João Paulo Sam- Sampiel. He said, all I can say is that we have a future Ballon d'Or winner here. Endrick and Lewis will be top level in the world. Uh, Lewis is a technically different guy. Physically, him and Endrick are two phenomena uh, because they're above average and have a mentality of wanting to be bigger. I brought them both at 14 years of age to play for the under-17s team and they were both training better than the 17-year-old boys. We played in tournaments in Japan. Lewis scored over 40 goals. The Japanese players were scared of him. Lewis doesn't get carried away. He knows the potential he has. He's a special I mean, there's a load of this stuff. I'm not going to go and read the whole article. There's a lot of it. There's a lot has been put in uh, to to this stuff. There's another um, another academy director there as well. Uh, there's, there's a big focus as well in the article about West Ham reducing the age profile of the squad, which I think is really important. We had the second oldest squad in the Premier League last season. And I mean, this is a great step in the right direction, isn't it? Certainly, you know, really, really looks like there's a, a cohesive um, structure, something really, really important going on at West Ham at the moment. And I, and I think this makes me very, very positive. What I'm very positive about, so I'm just look, I'm just looking around at the moment for, for my Manscaped shape because I'm going to go and promote that in a second. Um, what, what, I, what I think is incredibly important is the way everything seems to be tied in between Lopetegui and Tim Stuyton. That they're really, really working in unison uh, at the moment. Uh, before I talk about that, and it, and it is, I think, quite important stuff, uh, please point in the direction of Manscaped, who are sponsoring today's video. It's remarkable gear. You might notice I've had a shave uh, since yesterday. This is the Lawnmower 5.0. Brilliant, brilliant bit of kit. It's got an attachment. This this thing comes off. I've got it somewhere. I've shown you before on videos. This bit comes off. It's, these are ceramic blades. They don't actually cut you. Now, this is meant to be, to be fair, to be used downstairs in the Never Never regions. It's waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. The ceramic blades don't cut or nick or do anything t- nasty to you. And then there's another blade. This is just detachable. This comes off. Another blade goes on. And if you really wanted to, you, you can you can use this anywhere. But the real tool for the job uh, is actually the a beard trimmer. It is sensational. I can't stop going on about this beard trimmer. I never show you it because I use it all the bloody time. Manscaped make the best male grooming products, be it upstairs or downstairs, whatever you want. If it's a gift for yourself, honestly, fellas, buy it for yourself. If you want a gift for somebody else, you know what to buy them. Uh, grab some it. Best of all, <laughs> grab some it. Sounds a bit rude. Uh, best of all, we're going to give you 20% off plus free shipping. If you go onto the website, uh, the link is in the description below. Go onto the UK version of the Manscaped website. Uh, when you get to the checkout area, then it'll ask you for a discount code, HAMMERSCHAT20, or one word. It did just used to be HAMMERSCHAT, by the way, but someone someone nicked it and put it on like a disc, on those discount um, websites and the rest of it. So we've got a new one. It's, it's now HAMMERSCHAT20. So the old one, they no longer work, just, just HAMMERSCHAT. HAMMERSCHAT20, all one word, free shipping, 20% off. Honestly, go and check it out. These things are absolute. I, I still can't believe these things are waterproof. They, they really are. Use them in the shower, not a problem at all um right let's talk about the the sort of link that you have between tim stiton and lopetegui this is this is just joined up planning it really is this is whatever cliche you want to throw at it this is everybody singing from the same hymn sheet this is everyone pulling in the right direction i'm sure i'll think of more cliches in a minute this is the sort of thing you didn't feel was really really happening before for west ham to highlight this player, target this player, get him signed and get him signed and and the deal done ahead of other top clubs that wanted him. To take care of his future, five-year deal, plus a year option, bring his family over, do all of that stuff. is in complete contrast to disorganised mess that had West Ham hurriedly at the end of the January transfer window, basically wasting a load of money on Calvin Phillips, who just... (laughs) 
Well, not only were West Ham not prepared for that transfer, Calvin Phillips wasn't prepared for that transfer. He wasn't, he wasn't prepared to go and play football anyway. He wasn't, when I say prepared, I don't mean he wasn't willing. I mean, he, he physically wasn't, didn't, hadn't had the preparation. He wasn't mentally or physically ready to play football. It was a real botched transfer. There's, they're, they're almost like opposite ends of the, the spectrum, of the transfer spectrum. And it's really, really good to see this. And, and the time I joined up thinking is, is revealed, not only in, in the article from The Athletic, but from what Glare May is saying as well. Look, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff, you know, that, that I, honestly, I can take it or leave it. Getting the, the foreign player comes over, they get him to say, come on, you irons, or, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, you know. Very, very nice, and you see the bubbles, you see all the stuff. It's not that. The real fine detail is, is buried um, beneath, in the other words he said. So well, we found out that, that Stuyton had been to see him, been to see his family, it worked really hard at him. Um, but he's already met with Lopetegui more than once, and he's spoken to Lopetegui on numerous occasions. Now, not only that, Lopetegui clearly went to see him at his hotel. So he didn't just wait for him to get to the training ground or rest of it. Lopetegui's gone to his hotel to meet him. So you've got the director of football saying, I'm going to meet in the family. So we really want to get you over here. We want you to come to West Ham. So you've got all that stuff. Brilliant. All right. Um, forging relationships, doing all that. But that's being backed up. The words of the director of football being backed up by the manager who's saying exactly the same thing and outlining the tactics, outlining what he wants him to do. That is incredibly important. Incredibly important that when a director of football goes out and says, you know, we want you and you're going to be used, it's really important that that the coach is going to do the same thing. And I, I, it's for so many years, it's not just about David Moyes. It's for years and years and years. It's about David Sullivan going out, signing up to Brazil and signing Wellington Paul Easter and giving him to Sam Allardyce, who was never going to play him. You, you need this this joined up thinking, basically. You really do. The left hand needs to know what the right hand's doing. There you go, there's another one. Um, and and I, I think that's absolutely brilliant. For, him to, for Lopetegui to be speaking to him on the phone, for him to have met him at the training ground, to have gone to his hotel. What, what you're seeing is is the West Ham staff and the big hitters as well, the, the, the manager, head coach, whatever, and the director of football, going to the guy's house, going to his hotel. This is making an effort. That's the kind of stuff that is going to sell the transfer to a player. He was, he was talking about projects. Uh, for Guilherme to be talking about the project as much as he has, clearly those are the words that have been said to him. He, he's he's, he's peddling a narrative. I'm not saying he's telling lies. He's peddling a narrative that's been told to him. And that is healthy. The fact that People have been saying to him, Stites and Lopetegui have been talking to him about project, talking to him about the future, outlining the vision. I'd love to know it, I'd love to hear it myself. I mean, we're not going to hear it. We'll hear sound bites, we'll hear what we. We'll hear enough. We'll hear little drips and drabs of it here and there. I'd love to know what exactly the plan is and what the outline is because, I mean, it, I think it really is quite exciting actually to, to have. It feels like the first time in a, in a little while that all the club is pulling in the same direction. Um, impressed, really, really impressed. Don't know what's going to happen now. I mean, I, I've almost did another like a transfer roundup video today, but honestly, I've, I found it so much more interesting trying to read between the lines what's been said um, by Guilherme himself, by his former director, by his former coach, by his, the youth staff that looked after him. Um, it's, it's really been quite fascinating and. It's made me excited about it. I am really excited to see him play. And I haven't suddenly got massive expectations. I expect him to start games straight away. Um, but I do expect him to feature. So somebody yesterday said, uh, sarcastically, not, you know, being funny, um, it was nice. I said, are you, are you telling me when we hired a manager who makes substitutions? Um, I, I believe so. I, I believe so. This, this, is, this is what I think is going to happen. I think, you know, if things aren't going well tactically, I think we might start seeing some early substitutions. Um, I think there's a lot to get your teeth into. I think there's a lot to look forward to. And, and I'm not going to overly repeat what I said yesterday about it being exciting to get deals done early. But it is. It's a change. The whole thing feels like a change. This whole transfer feels like a switch that, that the club seems to have, have turned and, and switched really, really quickly, actually. And I'm not sure... I'm not sure how, it, how this would have worked, if it even could have worked under Moyes. I do think... Look, we don't even know if this works, by the way. This, everything could go belly up, right? But 
the, well, at least we're trying. And the direction the club want to go in, I don't think David Moyes was capable of doing this. He sort of had to go for us to try this new way, really. Um, and I didn't have any desire at all, as, as, as you know, if you're a regular listener, I didn't have any desire at all to see the next, to see Moyes 3.0, basically, which is what it would have been. Because it needed another rebuild. Got so many players retiring, so many places in the in the squad need replacing oldest squad and, and all the rest of it and players leaving and I, I I didn't it takes David Moyes so long even to make one transfer sometimes it, it takes him so long to do the rebuild it needs to be done you know more quickly really and so I'm I'm really pleased I'm pleased we're moving this direction uh, it's really really exciting hope hope the lad works out I mean you know if you listen to what's been said by you know, his coaches at Palmeiras and his coaches in, the, you know, the Brazilian youth set up and whatnot. Uh, you know, there's a, you know, a real, a top, a top talent here. Um, yeah, really looking forward to it. Anyway, there you go. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We'll be back tomorrow.